My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. It's Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. And now, with the conclusion of this week's Sonic Summerstock Playhouse, Mr. David Alt. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could please take your seats. Our second performance is ready. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And now, on the Summerstock Playhouse stage, may we present Fugue in C Minor from Soul Twin Audio. Soul Twin Audios. Stories created solely with the vintage soul in mind. Modern day era driving you up a wall? Time travel not likely in your future? Then follow me for a healthy offering of yesteryear with old time radio theater. Your remedy for unwanted 21st century pains. O-T-R-T-S-T-A. What story can I connect you with today? Do you have anything where organ music is heavily featured? Like Phantom of the Opera? Well, sort of, but more like... Ah, I think I know the one you mean. Soul Twin Audios presents another suspense recreation from the brilliant mind of Lucille Fletcher. Fugue in C Minor, starring Rhiannon McAfee and Pete Lutz. April 1st, 1900. Dear Bessie, this is just to let you know that I arrived in Pilotsville. Lizzie met me at the station. She's heartbroken about Papa's bankruptcy, and for some reason feels that it's up to me to remedy the family situation. I told her I'd been offered a job, but she swept away that idea in horror. A girl with your looks, Amanda Peabody? (laughs) Doesn't have to get a job. There's too many rich husbands floating around for that. Furthermore, she says, she has a rich husband already picked out for me right here in Pilotsville. Don't you remember? I told you about him at Christmas time. He's Mr. Evans. Rich as Croesus. <laughs> Charming, cultured, a lonely widower with two dear little children. And besides that, he's just your type, a real intellectual. You should hear him play the pipe organ. (gasps) And you know, Bessie, I've met so few interesting men lately. Mr. Evans. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Chumley. How delightful to see you here. I'd like you to meet my sister, Mr. Evans. My sister, Amanda Peabody. Delighted, I'm sure. It's a lovely party, Mr. Evans. Thank you, Miss Peabody. Have you just come to Pilotsville? Yes. She's down from New York, visiting me after the whirl of the hectic social season. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, indeed. <laughs> well, I'm afraid our pilots fill society must seem a bit dull to you, Miss Peabody. Oh, no, not at all. It's charming. I've enjoyed everything so much tonight. Your beautiful house, the music. I hear you're going to play for us, Mr. Evans. Oh, a bit. Do you care for organ music, Miss Peabody? Very much. I never miss a church recital. But what a luxury it must be to have your own pipe organ right here in the house. Oh, I'm afraid I couldn't do without it. It's my hobby, you know. Bach, Buxtehuda, César Frank. Don't you adore their work? Oh, Amanda's very musical. You should hear her render the burning of Rome. <laughs> yes. And the delightful thing, of course, about having a pipe organ in the house is that it's everywhere. To sit at a keyboard and hear the walls, the ceilings, the floors vibrate. You see, Miss Peabody, I've had the pipes installed all over the house. Under this floor, for example, are all the choir stops. Up in the bedroom walls are the stops for the swell manual. And the great 32-foot pedal stops, the great diapasons, are underneath the staircase. My children sleep next door to the echo chamber. <laughs> so you see, we live like angels here, in a paradise of music. Oh, how thrilling. Ladies, come upstairs to the second floor landing, won't you? And I'll show you the console. It was made for me in Vienna. April 7th, 1900. Oh, and Bessie, dear, to tell you the truth, I really find him fascinating. I wish you could hear him play. It sweeps you off your feet. There is such wildness to it, and, and at the same time, such dignity. And to hear the sound all through that marvelous house, rolling through those gorgeous rooms with their beautiful tapestries and potted palms, I could sit and listen to him all night. You have the most amazing eyes, Miss Peabody. What are you thinking about? The music. Oh, please don't stop. It's so beautiful. Well, you seem to be as mad about music as I am. Your sister says you play too. <laughs> oh, no. Only a little. My appreciation of it is all inside, I'm afraid. That's plenty. If one can't play, it's better just to enjoy the music of others. I can't bear the sentimental drumming, can you? I shouldn't think you would enjoy it. The idiotic tunes people play nowadays. Give me the old stern classics. They have strength and power. Give me something with life to it. Something that will flood the whole house with sound. You're a very unusual girl, Miss Peabody. Quite unlike the run of girls down here at Pilotsville. Oh, yes? In what way? Oh, it's rather hard to explain. Uh, some more tea, Amanda? A muffin? Oh, no, thank you. You have an excellent cook, Mr. Evans. Please, please call me Theodore. You know you promised. <sighs> Theodore. Amanda. And your house is beautifully run, too. Oh, you must have an excellent housekeeper. Everything always looks so charming and quiet. <laughs> I haven't even heard a peep out of your children. My children? Oh, yes. The children have been away at school. You have two, haven't you? Yes, Daphne and David. Oh, what sweet names. Ordinarily, I don't approve of schools for young children. But, you see, they were rather overwrought after Mrs. Evans passed on. I can well understand. They were almost morbidly devoted to their mother. And then, of course the unfortunate circumstances of her death. But I suppose your sister, Mrs. Chumley, has told you all about that. Oh, no. Well, not very much, except... Y your wife was killed in a street accident, wasn't she? Yes, in Philadelphia. A brewery wagon and four horses ran her down. Oh, how 
terrible. It's something I don't like to think about very often. Poor, beautiful Margaret. Well, it's like a nightmare, Amanda, and I still can't feel reconciled, but, well, what I was driving at was the children. They were in school when she died, and by, and by some malicious stroke of fate, there was an epidemic of scarlet fever raging out there. The authorities wouldn't lift the quarantine and let them out for her funeral. Oh, poor little things. Yes, it upset them dreadfully. In fact, I sometimes fear it's left a mark on them which may endure all their lives. Why? What do you mean? They suffer from delusions. Delusions about her. They think that in some way her soul is imprisoned in the organ pipes. Oh, how horrible. I wish I could do something about it. It's a frightful notion, but, but they don't let me play when they're at home. That echo chamber in particular, next door to the bedroom. Yes? Do you know it's nothing but an empty sealed room with a few wires? Of course, it's all because they never saw her dead. But they have a notion that she's, well, somehow hidden there. Oh, how ghastly. Well, they really think that, do they? <sighs> Children can think up such very strange things in their little minds, can't they? April 18th. I met the children today, Bessie, for the first time. Oh, it was a shock. They're strange little creatures, oh, utterly unlike their father. The girl is about eleven, and the boy eight. They were both dressed in deep mourning. Their large gray eyes seemed strained with terror. Oh, they listened and, and trembled at every sound. This is Miss Peabody, children. She's a very good friend of mine. Now I want you both to shake hands with her. Oh, come now, Daphne. You can at least tell Miss Peabody how old you are. Oh, oh no, please don't press her. Oh, I know when I was a little girl, I, I hated people to talk about my age. Oh, I'd much rather hear about, well, about school. We're not going back there, no matter what anybody says. David! Oh, oh that's all right. Well, then you didn't like school? No, and Mommy didn't like it either. She cried when we went away. Oh. But your mama wanted you to be educated, didn't she? Well, she wanted you to grow up and be intelligent people, didn't she? Well, didn't she, Daphne? Who are you? You may call me Aunt Amanda. I'm a friend of your papa's. Do you know where my mama is? Your mama? Well, your mama's in heaven, dear. No, she's not. Then where is she, dear? Come along now, children. Now we're going to have a little music, like old times. Do you remember when your mother was alive? We all used to play together. David, you with your cornet, and Daphne at the violin, and Mama at the piano. Well, Miss Peabody plays the piano, too, and she's promised to play Narcissus, Mama's favorite piece. Well? Oh, well, perhaps some other time, Theodore, when they don't feel so strange. I tell you, I've humored them to death. Now come, David, there's your cornet on the mantelpiece. And Daphne? No! I insist. Look now, I'll start the melody on the organ. David, you come in with your cornet obbligato in the third measure. Daphne, you can follow me. What's that? Come along, children. What's that note? That note making that funny noise. What note? Oh. <laughs> oh, you mean that. Oh, that's just a cipher. A wire must have stuck somewhere. Or one of the pipe valves. It's Mama! That's where Mama is. She's calling for us. Now don't be silly. I'll just hit the key a few times and it'll stop. You've heard these ciphers before, haven't you, Miss Peabody? Well, I don't know much about pipe organs. It's a common technical occurrence, but very annoying, of course. What's she doing in there? Why doesn't it stop? That's where she is. She's in the pipe and she can't get out. Daphne, stop that nonsense. Oh, hush, dear. Your papa will fix it. No, he won't. He can't. She won't let him because he killed her. Daphne? Daphne, what did you say? <laughs> oh, she didn't mean it, I'm sure. Oh, the poor little thing's hysterical. We should never have tried to persuade them. Oh, Amanda. Just because they never looked upon her face. Because they never saw her lying there in the coffin. Oh, gosh. My own children believe that I am a murderer. Theodore, you're making them both sick. So I, I who love their mother so much, who was so devoted for 12 years, 
Do I look like a murderer, Amanda? Do I? No. There it is again. It's Mama. It's Mama. Shh, dear. I I'll take them upstairs for you, Theodore, while you try and fix it. April 24th. Oh, Bessie, those poor little children. Well, we took them out to the cemetery today to show them her grave. A marble angel guarded it, and was planted with pure white tulips. How final it was, and peaceful. And yet, they began to tremble again the moment we set foot inside the house. Oh, poor Theodore. Well, the man is nearly out of his mind. Oh, what can he do? I keep asking myself that question. She died in Philadelphia, you say? Yes, on May 15th. Just a little less than a year ago. You weren't with her? No. She went there to take a piano lesson. There was a new teacher she'd heard about. She was always so self-conscious about her technique. But she never reached his studio. They notified me at midnight from the city morgue. And no one in Philadelphia saw her? No one except the attendants at the morgue, of course, and the people who picked her up after the collision. It was such a brutal accident. But there'd be no one from among them who could speak to the children? Explain to them? Oh, no. Oh, it's so horrible, so sordid. Oh, I know, my dear. I hate to make you suffer. But if we could find some way, if they could just believe, um, when, when you brought her back here to Pilotsville, there was a funeral. Yes. And was there anybody then who saw her? Oh, no, I couldn't bear it. Amanda, I, I didn't think at the time. She'd been so beautiful. Her lovely, sweet, gentle face and her eyes. The horses had completely trampled. Even if the children had been able to come home, I wouldn't have let them look. The coffin was sealed when I left Philadelphia. I didn't want to see her again myself. But there was a funeral. Oh, people came, there were flowers, an undertaker. Yes. Well, oh, if they could believe that, if there was one witness. Oh, oh perhaps my own sister Lizzie. Funeral, Amanda? Well, of course there was a funeral. The finest funeral in town. A snow-white hearse and 25 coaches. Everybody sent flowers. The casket wasn't open, but I've been to lots of funerals where they don't open the casket. And from what I understand, she was pretty badly mangled. Oh, but it was a beautiful funeral. Mr. Evans played the organ himself. The finest selections all the sweet old pieces his wife liked. There was Narcissus and Mighty Lack of Rose and Goodbye Forever. And that's the way it was. So, you see, David, my sister, Mrs. Chumley, was there. Yes, but how did she know it was Mama? Oh, David. She didn't see Mama, did she? Oh, no. Nobody saw your poor mama, dear. Well, she wouldn't have wanted anyone to see her. Mama wasn't there. She talks to us every night. She tells us to look for her. Where, dear? In the pipes. But, David, your mama's dead. She's been dead for nearly a year. Now, you saw her grave out in the cemetery. She's happy and at rest. Why doesn't Papa give us the key? If he'd only let us have it. We could look for her. What key, dear? The keys to the pipes. There's a little door just underneath the stairs. That's where the big pipes are. Inside, it's all dark. There are tunnels in there and little rooms that go all throughout the house. And that's where Mama is. That's where she's hiding. That's where Mommy is. That's where Mommy is! Oh, oh, David, darling. Now, now, now look. C come here. No! I hate you! But why do you hate me? Why don't you let me help you? Because you... 
You like him. Him? Papa. You're going to marry him, aren't you? <sighs> yes, you are. Sabrina says you are. You're going to marry him. Then he'll send us back to school. And there'll be no one left to help Mama. Poor Mama will never be let out. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. David, what are you doing here? David, did you strike Miss Peabody? He, he's sick, Theodore. I'm sure he's very sick. Now go to your room at once. Oh, those dreadful children. I tell you, Amanda, they'll ruin whatever happiness we might have. Theodore, I love you very much. But I couldn't marry you. Oh, not with that child's cry ringing in my head. Oh, we've got to help them. Give them that key. Let them go and look in the room where the pipes are. Then they'll see for themselves that there's no ghost. Key? Who told you about a key to that room? Well, the children. The children? Amanda, I'm going to tell you something. Something I've never told to a living soul. It, it, it may frighten you. Yes? Margaret was going mad when she died. No one knew it but me. It ran in her family. I discovered it long after we were married, after the children were born. Otherwise, I'd never have... Oh, and now you think the children... I'm afraid so. It was peopling of sound she had, just like them. A fear of the dead's returning. She used to play... What's that? Sounds like the organ. But the motor isn't on. The console was locked when I left. Someone's trying to play. No one but me can touch that instrument. It's forbidden in this house and the servants are out. Unless those children... Come upstairs, Amanda. Well, Theodore, why there's no one here. No one at the keyboard. The, the organ's playing itself. That's impossible. The motor's not going. The motor? Yes. It sets the bellows going. There's no air in the pipes and lets it on. No air to make the pipes speak. It's impossible, I tell you. Well, perhaps the children found the key and got in. Key? No, no, no. The key's in my pocket. There's no other way in there? No. Theodore, open that door. Go in there and see what's happening, please. No. Theodore! I won't give in. I, I, I won't be a prey to it. Do you hear? Do you hear? I won't. I won't. I won't. There. It stopped now. It, it, it was probably... Nothing but the wind. Theodore? Give me the key. I'm not afraid. Are you saying that I am? I don't know. But I'll be fair with you, Theodore. I couldn't marry you and live here with that any more than your children can. What do you mean? Oh, oh rip out those pipes. Oh, rip out the whole pipe organ. Oh, give it to a church, but don't keep it here. It's not worth it. Get rid of the pipe organ? Yes! But I couldn't. The whole house was built around it. It's been the very soul and spirit of this home. Oh, it's been the curse, you mean? Well, Theodore, I know I'd go mad, too, if I had to listen to it night and day. It's so hollow to think of those pipes. So huge down there in the darkness, I'd begin to hear things, too. <gasps> oh, oh, Theodore! Quiet. Be quiet. Come outside. We'll take a walk. No! No, give me the key! Give me the key! You're hysterical, Amanda. I'm sorry I've overburdened you. Why don't you want to go in there? Is it because you know something? You did something? What do you mean? Did you kill her? Amanda? <gasps> Very well, Amanda. Here's the key. If that's the way you trust me, we'll go down and look around together. Come now, Amanda. I'm sorry, Theodore. It slipped out. It was a dreadful thing to say. It's all right. I understand. Yet it hurts a little. I trusted you so completely, Amanda. Theodore? Yes, Amanda. Well, let's not go in there. I, I do trust you, darling. I, I, be I believe everything you've told me. No. This little key. To think it should mean so much. Black it is. Yes. Pitch black. Oh, I'm cold. Where, where are the pipes? I can't see them. Come in further, Amanda. You'll see them as soon as your eyes grow accustomed to the darkness. The biggest pipes pack this well under the great staircase, like giants. Yes, I, I'm beginning to see them now. Shouldn't we go and get a candle? Oh, no, no. Go in a little further. Be careful. The floor's a maze of wires. 
Now, stand there for a second. Oh, Theodore, don't leave me. I won't be long. I thought you said you weren't afraid. No, I'm not. Only... Where are you going? Just upstairs to play for you. Theodore! I'd like you to hear how the music sounds in the darkness. It's quite an experience being so close to the pipes. You know, narrow, suffocating, especially when I play the great Pascalia and Fugue of Bach. Oh, Theodore, please, I don't want to stay here. Or perhaps one of the Rheinberger symphonies, or the great chorales of César Franck. <laughs> Margaret, of course, preferred Narcissus. Margaret? You're very gullible, Amanda. Huh. Then, then you did kill her. You killed her in this room. And you're going to kill me? Yes. Simple, isn't it? But why? Why? I don't know. One gets tired every now and then of mere music. Sometimes the classics demand competition. A scream, for example. There's something so exciting about pulling out all the stops and drowning out all human sound. Have you ever tried to match your voice, Miss Peabody, against the thunderous voice of Bach? It's most effective. And then, when the struggle gets weaker, when the air is almost gone, and you choke and gasp for breath to bring the music down softer, softer. Oh, Theodore, you're mad! You're, you're mad! Come, Amanda. Would you deny me that pleasure? Oh, no! Help! Help! I promise the concert won't be too long. It takes about eight hours before the air gives out. But, you know, I could play for days. And don't worry about the children. I think you've convinced them about the ghost. What's that? Theodore? Someone shut the door. It's locked and the key's outside. Who's there? Who's there? Let me out! Let me out! Theodore? Get away from me! Let me out, do you hear? Let me out, let me out! I can't breathe. I'm suffocating. It's so dark. I can't breathe. Let me out! Please, please! I can't breathe! I can't! No, no, don't! I can't! I can't! Let me out! I, I, I can't breathe! I... I... Uh, <laughs> Let me out! He's dead! He's dead! Daphne! David, where are you? Open the door! Help me! Help me! Oh, no! No, 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 no! Help me! Help me! Help me! May 1st, 1900. I shall be coming home in a few days, Bessie. I still can't sleep at night. I still hear that laughter. still hear that hornet playing. It's unearthly music. And Theodore Evans once more lies dead at my feet. It was his heart, Bessie. He died of fright. In those few moments, he anticipated the hideous fate he had meted out to so many. And I might have died there if he had not gone so quickly. For the children hated me. They wanted to kill us both. Oh, those terrible, pathetic children. Oh, what horrors they must have sensed in that charnel house. There were other women besides his wife. Police found them all, buried and stuffed away into unused parts of the pipe organ. Oh, Bessie, I was in that pipe room alone with him for four hours before that door creaked open. And there they stood. 
and I shall never forget their faces or the things they said. All right, Miss Peabody. You can come out now. If you're really sorry. Yes. Are you sure he's quite dead? You were right. We were right all the time, weren't we, Miss Peabody? You were right. Now will you come and help us find Mama? You've been listening to a recreation of Lucille Fletcher's Fugue in C Minor, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense, especially for Jack Ward's Sonic Society's Summerstock Playhouse. Featured in our cast was Rhiannon McAfee as Amanda Peabody, Sharon Grunwald as Lizzie Chumley, Pete Lutz as Theodore Evans, Taylor Johnson as David, and Colette Fian as Daphne. Fugue in C Minor was directed and produced by Rachel Pullian for Soul Twin Audio's Old Time Radio Theater. The suspense theme was originally composed by Bernard Herrmann and reimagined by David Krause. Sound effects were provided by freesound.org with incidental music composed by Ross Bernhardt. The artwork for Fugue in C Minor was created by Joshua Mongardini. This is your announcer, Dean T. Moody. This has been a Soul Twin Audios production. Tremendous performance from the Soul Twin audio players directed by Ms. Rachel Pulliam. They will return again for a final performance later in the season. But for next week, be sure to secure your place here for next week's double feature from Reimagined Radio and the Mindstream players. Until then, with thanks for your patronage tonight, I'm David Alt from Jack Ward and myself. Good night from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And that concludes this week's performance of the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. All productions, features, characters and scripts presented in the Playhouse belong strictly to their respective copyright holders and no copyright infringement is assumed or intended. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse is part of the Sonic Society and a proud member of the Mutual Audio Network and any shows that continue their run must receive express permission from all parties involved. Join us next week for another new classic. With thanks to our announcer, Jack Ward, I'm your host, David Alt. Good night. Hi, this is John Bell. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. In my podcast, Bells in the Battery, 
I usually surpass a thousand words. Why does he? But for every episode, there is also a picture. You mean that itty bitty picture that you see when you bring up the episode? Yes, that's called a thumbnail. They're drawn on thumbnails? But now you can see all the thumbnail pictures in large format by going to the Bells in the Bat Free Gallery. Just go online to thebatfree.com. That's T H E B A T F R Y dot com. And click on Gallery. That's G A L L E. I think they can figure that out. You'll see all the pictures for all the episodes that were created by Jeff Music, along with other guest artists like the Lava Lee Brothers and famous animation director Dan Reba. Oh, he knows one celebrity, and he really wants you to know about it. You'll also see lots of fan art. Art over the years and a few surprises. So when you're in the mood for a picture instead of a thousand words, especially, especially his, his words, words, go to thebatfree.com and click on gallery. And be sure to clean your thumbnails before viewing.